Ignorance is just not the lack of knowledge. It is the lack of knowledge of the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Kindly pay attention as God's servant, Dr. Sheyi Obembe of Voice of Liberty Global Ministries ministers to you the gospel of liberty in Christ Jesus. We're considering, or rather, we want to continue the topic we started some weeks ago, accessing the supernatural through faith. Accessing the supernatural realm through faith. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you were present at the last supernatural service, we dealt by the Spirit of God, we dealt with this uh, portion of the scripture. Um, our faith is always now. Praise God. Faith is what? Faith is always now. I remember teaching that you cannot really bank on the anointing because there is an agency that regulates the operation of the anointing. Even the anointed doesn't have power to regulate his anointing. It can't determine when the anointing will be available to touch you because the Holy Spirit is the administrator of the anointing. As a matter of fact, the Holy Ghost is the anointing. Say to somebody beside you, the Holy Ghost is the anointing. Alright, so when the Holy Ghost is present in a place, it decides when to, to use the anointing to heal people, heal the sick and do all sort of things. But when it comes to faith, the Bible says now, faith is. Meaning that you can get your miracle now, you can get your breakthrough now, everything you desire from God, you can get now. If you come, if you route the supernatural through faith, praise God. So, we want to consider the other part of the scripture. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, this is where we're going. The evidence of things not seen. Now, there are five physical senses in the body. Who can help me? Five physical senses. No corona I need one, one person. Pa um, Pamela Ray, right? Please come. Celebrator. Simple biology, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. tell them. The tongue. The tongue, the that's tongue for tasting. The eyes for seeing. Eyes for sight. The nose, the nose for smelling. Smelling. The ears for hearing. Auditory, good. And the skin for feeling. For touch. Please celebrate her. Cele when you were like, when you, you did not even know ABC, don't let me talk about you. <laughs> Glory to God. So there are five physical senses. We have the sight, the smell, the touch, the auditory, talking about the hearing, and the taste. Now, the work of these five physical senses, the work, their work is to present an evidence to your soul about the reality of physical things. Now, come, come, come. What's this? Now, how real is this phone to you? Is it real? It's real. Why is it real? Why do you think this phone is real? You can touch it. If somebody calls and there's a ringing tone, you can also hear it. So you are sure it is real. So if somebody says this thing is not real, this thing is a mirage, this one is not real, what would you say? You would rather believe that the person has mental problem, right? Now, the only reason why you believe this phone is real is because your physical senses, eh, they validate the reality of this. You can see it. Your sense, your sense of sight is telling your soul that this thing is real. Your sense of touch is sending a signal to your soul that this thing is real. Alright? So, the work of the five physical senses, like I said, is to validate. Somebody say validate. To validate the reality of physical things. In other words, their work is to present an evidence to your mind. And even when your mind is doubting whether that thing is real or not, as far as you can expose your five physical senses to those things, and your, your, your senses can capture the reality of those things, suddenly something happens in your brain. You believe that this thing is real. Praise God. And thank God for the five physical senses. The truth is, no, none of us can survive without them. Alright? None of us can survive without the five physical senses. Just imagine how life would be will look like if you cannot see if you cannot hear if you cannot feel anything if you cannot taste the moment any of your five physical senses is not working eh? the word tag you what disabled why because on this side of eternity the senses 
are very important for existence. Now, as good as the five physical senses are, there is a sad reality. The sad reality is that these five physical senses, they have programmed a system in your soul. Alright? They've programmed a false standard, a false yardstick for determining what is real, what is not real. Anything your senses can interact with, your soul will flag it as real. And anything your senses cannot interact with, your soul flags it as what? Unreal. Anything your physical senses cannot present evidence for, then your brain says this thing is not real. Now, you don't know what havoc this ungodly programming your soul has done to you. That programming that only measures reality by whether you can see it or not or whether you can touch it or not. That ungodly programming has done a lot of havoc to you and you don't know. Now, if I say, mm, I see angels here. Ah! I see a lot of angels. In fact, they are flying around your head. Something will suddenly come up in your mind. All oh, these pastors, they have come again. Yet, the Bible says, we have come to innumerable company of angels. Even now that I'm talking, somebody said, Pastor, don't talk about Bible. Let's face reality. Your own standard for reality is what? What you can see, what you can hear, what you can handle, what you can taste, what you can smell. Praise God. Because your senses present an evidence to your soul about the reality of those things. So, faith is the evidence of things you cannot see. So, here the Bible makes us to understand that it is possible to have evidence for things your physical senses cannot capture. And if you don't understand faith, you cannot go very far in your Christian journey. The moment you are praying and say, Lord, heal me by your stripes, I'm healed. That ungodly programming comes up in your mind and say, ah, but you are still feeling the pain. You are not yet healed. Don't deceive yourself. So, if at all you hope to, to go far with God, if at all you hope to exercise dominion over principalities and power, eh, you must master the doctrine of faith. And Satan understands this, okay? Satan partners with that ungodly programming in your soul to, de to deprive you of your miracle, to rob you of the access. The Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The inheritance of the saint in the life belongs to you. But how you take hold of those things eh, is by what? It's by faith. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 20 verse 24, the Bible says, Then Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto him, Unto them, Except I see in his hand the print of the nails, and trust my hand into, the, into his side, I will not believe. Now that was not just Thomas talking. Senses. According to senses, eh? Seeing is what? Believing. But according to the law of faith, believing is what? Seeing. If you don't believe it, you cannot see it. Now, come back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things you hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, if you, you come to this church and your phone gets missing, and you go to the protocol and say, please, I'm looking for my phone. Now, they have to find the phone, but they are not sure. So, the protocol member says, okay, how am I sure you are the owner of this phone? Of this phone? So, he said, well, my phone is a pink colored iPhone. It has a cover, black cover. It's rough. The ringing tone is this. And you begin to describe. By the time you finish describing the phone, the protocol member knows that you are the owner. Why? Because you have presented an evidence that shows you are the owner. Now, this is how the realm of the spirit operates. Before you take anything from the realm of the spirit into the realm of the physical, eh? you must present your evidence. The realm of the spirit will not just dash you anything for free until there is an evidence because your evidence is the spiritual currency. There is one currency on earth that can buy anything. If you go to America, you can't spend Naira. But when it comes to faith, faith is the universal currency. The reason why we call it the universal currency is because it can buy anything anywhere in the world. Listen to me, your breakthrough is not in a geographical location. Some of you, all your hope is to Jackpa. You, just, you believe that your breakthrough is in America. But listen to me, if you don't go there with a the spiritual currency, you will be so broke. You know there are people that beg in America. You must go there with faith. Because that's the spiritual currency. Hello sisters, don't marry a brother just because he has some money in his account. 
doesn't matter what he has in his account today he can finish the bible says money makes themselves wings and they fly away there is something that generates money recurrently it's called faith money can buy anything but there's something that buys money that guarantees that you are sustained you are you are sorted anywhere you are in the world you can be in a village and your needs are met where was elijah when ravens were bringing food the bible says there was a famine in the land people did not have food there was no water and god said go to the brook and the ravens no one on ravens i don't know how plenty they were but they were bringing food in the morning and in the evening this guy was sorted why because he had a what a spiritual currency faith is that thing that gives you evidence and the evidence is what you use to access something in the realm of the spirit listen to me there are too many uncertainties in this world that you cannot afford to rely on your physical senses to survive now the question is are you sure you will not die before the end of this year i want you to use your physical senses and answer that your five physical senses what is the evidence that somebody will not kidnap you and use you for money ritual you some of you that are looking for good husband what is the evidence that you will find a good man in this generation where we have a lot of pretenders even in church are you sure you will ever make one million naira in your entire lifetime what's the evidence that you will you will break through now if you attempt if you attempt to approach these questions these uncertainties with your senses you will err because the senses do not have evidence for things that are unseen there is only one thing that projects evidence that sends an evidence to your soul about all this question it's called what faith that makes me to say faith is the sixth sense now let, let me let me share a story with you recently i i ordered something on gg.com and when the guy the guy sent it this part of rider and all that and when the rider came the guy did not deliver the stuff he didn't give me he said you have to send money to my ogre before i give you this thing i said i, I will pay now just give me said, mm -mm -mm. pay first and you won't just pay my ogre must confirm so i sent the money and we waited for a while and ogre said i have seen the money that was when he gave me now the question is did your guy actually see the money did he see the money what did he see somebody see evidence the ogre did not see money yet they gave me the goods all they saw was evidence so when we say faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen everything you need in life to be fine your future husband your future children money everything sound health they are all unseen and for you to lay claim on them and make them your home you must present that evidence to the realm of the spirit before they release it open your bible to the book of romans chapter 12 verse 3 romans 12 3 says for i say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as god has dealt with every man the measure of faith now listen to me the bible makes us to understand here that the, that god has dealt with every man in christ the what the measure of faith do you know the meaning of that every child of god already has faith say i have faith the reason why you are called believers in the first place is because god dealt with you the measure of faith there is no faithless believer some of you you are under pressure to have faith ah, my problem is that i don't have faith i need faith oh god you have all the faith you need in the world the disciple said master increase our faith there is always this pressure to have more faith but the, the word of god makes us to understand that the problem of a believer is not faithlessness because god has dealt with every man in christ the what the measure of faith and now the bible did not say a measure of faith it says the measure how many of you understand english you understand english please come, come please celebrate him come 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 come, come. quickly celebrate him if he's not sure for you can't come to the place so i trust it. what's the difference between a measure of faith and the measure of faith the, the measure of faith is the article things show certainty it's specific a measure of faith is not there's no specificity there is no specific he did well he tried he tried celebrate him so the word t is a definite article 
that standardizes what they are talking about the measure of faith means there is a standard there is the standard measure every believer has and the meaning of that is pastor adibu does not have more measure of faith than you do every believer has what the measure of faith if you accept a measure of faith then maybe there are different other measures of faith but it's just a standard measure every child of god has that faith eh, is in your spirit what did i say as a believer when you got born again god put faith in your spirit man is a spirit being he has a soul and he does what he lives in the body so when you got born again it was your spirit that got born again and god coded faith and it was not just faith that god put inside your spirit god put all the virtues bible says now the fruit of the spirit is love peace gentleness meekness faith and it begins to list them now all those virtues they already coded in your spirit note the bible did not say the fruit of the holy spirit is love it's not the fruit of the holy spirit the holy spirit does not bear fruit it is you can you hear me when jesus said i am the vine ye are my branches when you look at a tree is it the vine that, that bears fruit or the branches i'm asking is the branch so the holy ghost does not bear fruit so there's no there's no such thing as the fruit of the holy ghost it is the fruit of your spirit and you you bear that fruit because you are connected to the vine which is the holy ghost praise jesus so inside your spirit there is love there is meekness there is joy there is patience there is faith it doesn't matter if you are always angry if you are always hating everybody eh? that reality is only captured in the realm of your soul but deep within your spirit there is love see there is love in me I love people. I'm a lover. Some of you say me, I'm, I'm just very impatient. Patience is in your spirit. All right. See, before you, before you pray and tell God, give me patience. Know where the patience is going to come from. It's not coming from heaven. It's coming from where? From your spirit. That's where, as believers, we live from inside out. All the, all the things, all the things you are trusting God for. Everything is coded. It doesn't matter what habits. You are struggling with it doesn't matter whether you are lying you are stealing you are fornicating eh? even though you don't want to fornicate but you are just struggling lord help me help me it doesn't matter what you are going through all this all the spiritual virtue that makes a man look like god everything is coded where in your spirit and this is why the bible says we are complete in christ say i am complete in christ i am complete in christ so your spirit has been simulated to look like heaven and that's why that is the only part of you the holy ghost is comforted to to live the holy ghost does not live in your body it does not live in your soul it lives where in your spirit the bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the almighty are you getting something so just the way god already coded love joy this in your spirit faith also is where is in your spirit so the question is if all children of god already has the measure the same standard the same measure of faith why is it that some men of God find it easy to use their faith to get things while you, you are stranded when it comes to getting things by faith? Why? What is the problem? Why is it difficult for me to access the realm of the spirit and walk in power, walk in miracles? Do you want to know why? Open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 21. Matthew 21, 21. Matthew 21, 21 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not. Now see after me, If you have faith and doubt not. Now, not Jesus did not say, If you have faith or doubt not. He said, If you have faith and doubt not. Meaning a man can have faith, Yet also has doubt. Both faith can and, and doubt can do what? Can coexist. Faith is coded in your spirit, but doubt can thrive in your soul. And when faith is here in your spirit and doubt is here, the influence of doubt will shipwreck your faith. This is this is the mystery behind how believers don't get results. Despite the fact that you have faith, you have the capacity to believe God for anything. The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Jesus said, If you don't need your faith increased, you have the perfect measure of faith. All right, he said, For if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will do what you will tell this mountain to move. So, but why is it that we are not moving mountains? Why is it that we are living ordinary life? 
is because doubt is captured in our soul. And why is doubt captured in your soul? Doubt is captured in your soul because of the ungodly programming. Don't forget I started by saying that the physical senses already programmed an information into your mind such that anything you cannot see, touch, hear, feel, eh, that programming flags it as what unreal. Okay? So that is the origin of doubt. So if at all you want to walk in victory, if at all you want to use your faith and get things done, something must be done about your doubt. When a man brought his son to Jesus, a lunatic boy, the Bible says they took the boy to the disciples and the disciples could not cast him out. And Jesus said, bring him to me. Jesus asked the man, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I thought you said you believe. Help thou my what? Meaning that in the guy, faith and unbelief coexisted. The disciples said, Master, why could we not cast him out? Jesus said, oh, he said, because of your unbelief. Now, do you want to tell me that disciples did not believe? If they bring a demon possessed to you that is tearing everybody, scattering every place, it takes a measure of faith to even stand and say, in the name of Jesus, get out. It takes a level of faith. You have not seen some demon aggressive demon you bind them with chain they lose themselves say this one is strong and for you to stand before a strong demon like that it's because you have faith so the disciples had faith in their spirit they knew they could cast out that demon because jesus did a lot of that in their presence but here jesus shocked them and said you could not cast him out because of, of your what unbelief so the reality of the disciples was that faith was in their spirit but unbelief was where in their soul so if at all you want to walk in power and use your faith to get things done listen to me what i'm saying demons know if your faith is only in the spirit demons know you don't have power over them because when you talk eh, they, they they examine the foundation upon which you are talking where is this person talking from? Is he talking from the realm of the spirit or from the realm of his soul? Eh? It is not enough for your faith to be in your spirit. There must be a, a technology that would move your faith from the realm of your spirit to the realm of where? Of your soul. Glory to God. Please follow me. I'm going somewhere very powerful. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. So, in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20, Jesus said to the disciples, when they said, increase our faith, Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Now, what does it mean to have faith like a mustard seed? A lot of preachers have said, you know, uh, Jesus was talking about the size of the mustard seed. Like, if you have a faith that is the size of the mustard seed you will, you will remove mountain but the, the truth is we already have the measure of faith and that measure of faith is, is bigger than the mustard seed so why are you not moving mountain jesus was not talking about the size of the seed let me show you what jesus was talking about when jesus said if you have faith as the mustard seed this is what he was saying in mark chapter 4 verse 30 the bible says where where unto shall we like in the kingdom of god he said, it is likened unto a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the head, it is less than all the seed that is on head. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shooteth forth. Praise God. So when Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, he was not talking about the size, rather he was talking about you unleashing the potential of your faith by releasing your faith on a soil, on a ground where you can find full expression. If you have faith like a mustard seed, that expression was figurative. Jesus was saying that if you drop your faith, if you plant your faith, if you release your faith on a ground, it has a potential in it to grow and become really big and give you great results. Now, where is your faith? Your spirit. So, when Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, Jesus was saying that 
you must learn to release your faith from the realm of your spirit and plant it in your soul where it can neutralize the influence of doubt in your life the problem of a believer is not faithlessness it is doubtfulness did you hear that the problem of a believer is not what faithlessness it is doubtfulness so a technology must be generated that would that would make your that will release your faith from your spirit and what plant it in your soul where it can grow and deal with the influence of doubt thank you jesus because the faith that works is the one that works unopposed what did i say the faith that works is the one that works unopposed the moment doubt is opposing your faith that faith is what is shipwrecked in Luke chapter 8 verse 25 the Bible says and he said unto them where is your faith now this was when Jesus and his disciples they were traveling on the boats and the Bible says there was a stormy sea and the disciples were panicking they were shouting screaming yet Jesus was sleeping the senses told the disciples that they were going to die Jesus had senses too but he had a sixth sense that projected an evidence to his soul that all was well. So while all of them were agitated, Jesus was sleeping. So when they eventually woke up, Jesus, Jesus, the Bible says, and he awoke, arose and rebuked the wind. Peace be still, and there was a great calm. And Jesus looked at them and said, Where is your faith? Look at somebody beside you and say, Where is your faith? Listen to me, it is not enough for you to have faith. It matters where your faith is. If your faith is in the realm of your spirit, eh? You won't bet the result. Doubt will shipwreck it. And so Jesus said, Where? He was not just trying to find them like, Where is your faith? He was asking, Where is your faith? Is it in the realm of the spirit or in your soul? Because the faith that works is not the one that is locked up in your spirit, it's the one that, that is locked up in your soul. Praise Jesus. How do you get your faith to move from your spirit to your soul? The Bible says, the word of God is quick and powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Praise God. The Bible says the word of God is like a sharp sword. Please come. Somebody come. Let me show you something. I want to show you how to release your faith. The reason why you've not been getting results as Christians, as believers, is, is that your faith is in the wrong place. Eh? And where is that wrong place? Spirit. Where should it be? Why should it be in the soul? To deal with your doubt. Now, how do you release your faith from the spirit to the soul? The Bible says the word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the, the word of God is a spiritual sword. The Bible makes us to understand in, in, uh, in the book of, I think, Ephesians. He said, put on the whole armor of God. It talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the Bible says this word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder. Another translation says that that sword can divide, can cut the veil that separates the spirit of a man and the soul of a man. The illustration that the Holy Ghost gave me is that when you go to the market to buy gari and you put your gari inside a sack, eh, a small sack, then you have a bigger sack. You put beans inside the bigger sack, you know not put your gari that sack of gari you put it in the midst of the beans but something now happens something punctures the sack of gari what will happen to the gari eh? it will erupt inside the beans so the sack of gari is your spirit eh? that's the core of your being the bible talks about spirit soul and body in that progression spirit is the core the core next one is the soul then the body so faith is locked up where in your spirit and the bible says the word is the sword it can pierce even the divi dividing asunder that veil that separates the spirit and soul and the word can do what pierces and when the word pierces it what do you think will happen what, what will happen faith say osmosis who said osmosis <laughs> science student <laughs> glory to god when, the, when, when you sit under the teaching ministry like this, where you are hearing the word of faith, or you are reading the word of God, you are studying the word of God about faith, that word in the realm of the spirit, it, it becomes sword. 
and it begins, it penetrates that thing that divides your soul and spirit. And once that division happens, the virtues that are locked up in your spirit, they erupt into your soul. And that's why the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to me, it's important you know where the faith is coming from. The faith is not coming from the word of God. The Bible did not say faith comes from the word and, and uh, it didn't say faith comes from hearing the word. It says faith comes by the faith is not coming from the word. It's coming from your spirit. Eh? Through the word. If you have a friend, if we both have a friend, eh? And I'm interacting with your friend. Ah, guy, give that uh, some money now. The guy is broke. And the guy gives you money. Did the money come from me? But the money came by me. Because I was the one that influenced the, transfer, the transaction. All right? The money did not come from me. It came by me. It would not have collected a dime if I didn't influence the friend to give him. So when the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He's saying that it is the word of God, the entrance of the word of God that does something to that thing that divides the spirit and soul eh? and causes an eruption of what? Of faith. And that faith enters your, your, your soul to deal with your doubt. And listen to me, when the word of God divides that asunder, that veil. It is not only faith that comes out. Even love that is in your spirit comes out. Patience comes out. Long suffering comes out. Joy comes out. Have you been depressed and you come under the influence of the word of God like this? And suddenly you begin to jump up. You are happy. You came depressed. But something penetrated that veil and love, joy, peace moved from a realm into the realm of your soul. That is what the word of God is the word of God does. The Bible says the word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. So, if you are here, you, you trivialize the word of God. If you are here, you don't pay attention to the word of God. You are shortchanging yourself. Say to somebody beside you, stop shortchanging yourself. Place premium on the word. Value the word. Everything that you need for life and godliness, the Bible says God has given you, right? But he has only given you in your spirit. As long as they remain in your spirit, they cannot be your experience. Alright? Because it is your soul. Whatever dominates your soul controls your life. Are you getting my point? Whatever thing dominates your soul controls your life. Oh, you are not getting it. Whatever dominates your soul does what? I didn't say whatever dominates your spirit whatever dominates your soul does what when god promised abraham that abraham would have a son at that time abraham was 100 sarah was like 99 physically there was no evidence eh? the physical senses could not generate any evidence to validate what god said the bible says about abraham said who against hope he believed in hope but Abraham did not get to that point of believing God overnight. He still went to sleep with who? Somebody say Ketura. Ah! Say Bible student. Ketura. In Jamaica. In Bible student, listen to me, daddy. He still went to sleep with Agar, the, the slave of because God told him that he would have a son. And physically speaking, Sarah could not perform after the manner of women she was not menstruating anymore so abraham wanted to help god he didn't believe he could yes faith was in his spirit but his soul was full of doubt unbelief so he wanted to help god and said and god said ah what can i do to this guy yeah come god took him outside and said god god said look look at the stars he said can't them say lord i cannot count he said so shall i see do you know what god was trying to do god was trying to do something about the soul because if he gets to your soul Eh? are your eyes and your ears when the bible says faith comes by hearing it is saying faith comes by reading hearing eh? so even when you are reading the word of god you must say it out to yourself the bible says this book of law must not depart out of your word mouth you must say it there's no such thing as reading the bible to yourself and you are not saying anything you mutter words it's called meditation when you are meditating in the word of god it involves your mouth See, i'm teaching you how the realm of the spirit works you must use your mouth and say the word to yourself so that your ear can hear it. So the gates to your soul are your eyes and your ears. So God took Abraham out and said, look at the stars. 
Look at the stars. Can you count them? Say no. Say so shall the seed be. So the next time Abraham thought about what God said, the next time he remembered the promise of God, he was seeing the stars. Because at that point, something had entered his soul. Something had entered his consciousness. God changed his name and said, you are no more Abraham. You are now Abraham. So people were calling him Abraham. Father of many nations. He told everybody, don't call me Abraham again. And I'm now father of many nations. Because at that point, he believed the word of God. But what did God do to get him to that point? God exposed his soul to something. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Says faith comes. Don't go. Faith comes by hearing. And what? Hearing by the word of God. So you agree with me that faith does not come from the word of God. Eh? It comes from where? Your spirit by the, by the word of God. The Bible says the gospel that we heard was the same gospel they heard. But the word did not mix with faith in their heart. Do you know the meaning of that? All of them heard the same gospel. But for some people, the word did not mix with faith in their heart. If it was automatic that when you hear the word of God, faith will come, will come. Then, everybody should believe. Today, everybody should be born again. Because everybody at some point already heard the gospel. But some people believe, some people don't believe. Why? Because it did not mix with faith in their heart. So the word of God is not the agency that brings faith. The word of God is the agency that brings faith out of your spirit. Praise God. Let me round up. Glory to God. Second Peter's 1 19 says, We have a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well that you take it as unto light that shines in dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in your soul, in your heart. Listen to me. The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy talking about the word of God. And he's saying that you must give it to this word eh? until something happens to you until the day star and day dawn comes up in your soul. You don't understand this scripture. Now let me explain to you. The Bible says when you give attention, when you give heed to the word of God, the word of prophecy, eh? The Bible says a light will begin to come up in your soul. He you says as a light that shines in darkness. Imagine a small light shining gradually in the midst of darkness. That is what happens when you begin to expose your soul to the word of God. Gradually the light. Have you heard this on this little light of mine? That little light begins to erupt out of your soul out of your soul but god said don't stop eh? he said until that light metamorphosis into the day star and day dawn until the day star and day dawn arises in your heart the problem with many believers is that we get we give up too soon when we expose our soul to the word of god you think by just reading the bible for five minutes faith will be, will be better than your soul you are joking sometimes it takes days weeks for that day star to arrive in your, to, to, to be better than your soul but we are not patient with the word of God say to somebody beside you be patient sit down with the word listen to me faith is not stubbornness say to somebody beside you if, even if you don't understand you can just say it faith is not stubbornness someone say mm, I believe mm. That is in his head. He's afraid. Of, he's having palpitation. I believe he's not a giddy. Listen to me. When this day star arises in your heart, it takes over your emotion. There is peace everywhere. You don't know why you believe, but you know you. There is an evidence in your soul. There is an evidence in your soul that stabilizes your, your emotion. <laughs> I remember when I was in the university, they were teaching me about faith like this. So I said, let me go and practicalize. That day I didn't have money. And I wanted to cook beans. I didn't have money to buy kerosene. Those days we used stove. There was, I'm not sure there was gas cooker there. So I said, I'm going to use faith. That's when I went to go and pack water. I poured it inside the stove where I was supposed to put kerosene. I now pour water inside my beans. Now bring, I brought the, the pot of beans. I put it on the stove. 
I was not saying, ah, the just shall live by faith. Karos keteli brokotoli bragada ke brakata kataba. Listen to me. If you are confessing the word of God at that point, or guy is too late. If that is when you begin, you want the day star to arise overnight, it's too late. I was like, Kekupa, Ikapa. I quoted all the scriptures. I was using the scriptures as therapy to numb my home belief, to deal with my home belief, but it was too late. After 30 minutes, I said, Thank you, Lord. Katusha Hata. I went to open the beans. It don't swell. I dipped my hand into it. It was so cold. I was angry. Satan told me, faith does not work. See, when you are trying to work faith and it's not working, would you rather believe that you are wrong than for you to believe that God is wrong? The Bible says, let God be true and all men liar. Would you humbly accept that there's something I did not get? Than for you to say, ah, all this thing they are just teaching us. Putting it go ahead. See, faith is there. We're not putting it in your head, though. You want to start confessing faith, confessing the word of God at the point when you are confronted. At that point, it's too late because it is what you have eaten that will come up. It's what you have planted. If you have not planted your faith into your soul like a mustard seed, eh? You can't compel the seeds to germinate overnight. Even maize, when you plant maize, at least it takes two, three days for it to start sprouting. But you, you want to plant your mustard seed and you want to see it germinate, right? So when we say, when, we, when I teach you about faith now, eh? This is the time to start releasing your faith. The future. I read in another place, Jesus said, if you had faith, like a mustard seed. He didn't say if you have faith. He said if you had it. In other words, if you had it in the past and planted it then, by now, it would have germinated. And now you would have started reaping the results of your mustard seed. If you had the faith. But you, you, you are too lazy. You don't want to do any work. It is when the problem comes. Ordinary headache. You rush to go and look for plaster more. It is when they say, uh, I'm sorry, it is cancer. God forbid. That's when you start guarding scriptures. Eh? Where is this? Ah, Philemon. You are looking for Philemon in the Old Testament. You are so confused. <laughs> At that point, it is not faith you need. You need an anointing to help you. And that's why the Bible says, if any one of you, of you is sick, let him call the elders. Eh? The, let them pour anointing, gallon. Let them pour it on you and lay hands. Let the, oh my God! The prayer of faith. He said, "He will heal the sick." It's not your own prayer. It's the prayer of the elders, elders that have contended and labored with the word. They they participated with the Holy Ghost in releasing faith from the realm of their spirit to the realm of their soul. They go and call those kind of people. Don't go through the risk. Some of you, you have to humbly take drug, patiently. Just take it. Admit that you don't have. That day star better than your soul. <coughs> I will not take the. <coughs> I will not. And it's dying. Okay? It is not what you are not using that works. It is what you are using. If you are not using faith, okay, use drug. Say somebody, say, say, say use drug. <laughs> if you are not using faith, please use drug. Because it is not. He said, I will not use faith. It is not. Not using faith that works. It is using. It is what you are using that works. You are not using faith. You are also not using drugs. You are on your own. God brought medical practice into our world eh, to sustain you in your, in, your, in, your, in your journey of faith. God knows that you won't get there overnight. That day star will not be battered. Oh, oh. Praise God. That day star will not be battered overnight. So while you are working in progress, while you are building your faith, while you are planting, you settle with the word of God and the light is coming. That little light is growing. Eh? You might need to leverage medical science eh? till you get to that point where you can now begin to get healed without using drug. He said until the day start. So that means there is a threshold you reach that you know that you know that you know that you have an evidence. Listen to me. The the 
the evidence that shows you have the evidence the evidence that shows that that day star has been better in your soul is that the day star configures your soul the content of soul are the mind the will and the emotion all right that day star touches your mind in other words it influences your thinking pattern it's not like you are saying i am it i am it and your mind is saying you are not heed don't de don't deceive yourself it conditions your emotion when the day star is better than your soul you can jump up now if i if you just receive 100 million alerts right now i know you won't sit like this you will interrupt this service we will struggle to hold you take leave me alone you will start behaving he said yes sir i've not even finished abio <laughs> He's already restless. <laughs> 100 million alerts you receive here. <laughs> oh, yeah, take it. <laughs> now, even though you have not seen the money physically, but that evidence will do something to your soul. You start behaving like a madman. You start, you are restless, you are happy, you are jumping, you are dancing. Suddenly, you are thinking of going to car where they sell car to price car. You have not seen the money fiscal. You are how much is Lamborghini? Is it? 50 million. Why? Why is it so cheap? It's too cheap. Oh. Ah, it's, it's too cheap. Oh, your are you sure it's original? It's already pricing car. Because when you receive an evidence, it takes hold of your soul and controls your life. And this is why I'm saying that whatever thing enters your soul dominates your life. It controls your feeling, your thought pattern, your action. People are looking at you, they look you think you look like a madman. Why? Because they have not seen what you are saying. They have not received the evidence. The day star that is controlling you is not in them. And that's why the Bible says a man that is born of the spirit is like wind. Nobody knows where it's coming from. Nobody knows where it's going. Because there's a force in his soul that controls him. Please pray in tongues for 10 seconds. Zevreketeli branda mo shahati, rara shiketeli mo gundili akata, rosita pahanda kusha, ete beso zevre de dika toko breketi atabaha, rusha dika bo shaha, ika zuzi zuka pali kapila kunde kusha, raso teke brosha koto la balaka tiga baya, jebere kete kapara takura baha, jekete lebro koto lebra gada bara basha. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Today, from, from today, today, tell yourself, I must contend for this evidence. And how do you contend for it? By the word. You sit with the word. You gather scriptures around faith. Is it healing you want? Look for scriptures that talk about healing. Look for audio tape. Videos that talk about audio tape. This message I'm preaching, go and listen to it. Settle with it until something begins to happen. Until that sword penetrates that veil and causes an eruption. Was it not Bishop Oyedeku and the wife that were traveling? And there was, a, there was almost an accident. The car was moving like this. Almost some assaulted. The wife started shouting, Jesus, Jesus. Baba said, stop. Once is enough. Why are you calling Jesus hundred times? Why? Because the flesh, that thing in your soul tells you that this mountain is too big for you to call Jesus. Also. Keep calling it. Because this one is strong. Keep calling Jesus, Jesus the, the act of fear. fear. It is fear that is motivating Jesus. Once is enough. enough. Why are you abusing the, the name of Jesus? A man of God was sleeping late in the night and he started hearing a roar in the sitting room. Ah! Wind everywhere, chairs scattered everywhere. Then he came downstairs and he saw that demon with it. What he said? Satan, so it's for you. He went back to sleep. The demon was angry, embarrassed, and disappeared. If it is you, you will call Jesus one million times. Fire! Fire! And the demon is dancing. You, you are entertaining the demon. Because he knows that everything you are saying is sponsored by fear. And you are wondering why the demon is not disappearing. <laughs> oh my Jesus. Now they just shall live by faith. Rise up on your feet. Clap for Jesus if you want to clap. Glory to God. 
Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Ekoriba shinde koko robo shinde akabara katila handa kabazuza bregede. Shapala tata, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Where do you do well that you take heed? As unto a light that shines in dark place. Until the day dawn and this star arises in your soul. Karosh kete bila kuketi kapahande. Can we join our hands together? I want us to try this atmosphere right now. Reshekito 